Wellness Show, episode number 398. Welcome to the Wellness Show, a podcast on health and wealth. I'm your host, Tyson Bannigan, the founder of the Extraordinary Healing Arts Academy. Join me as we get the latest insight, tips, and strategies from wellness providers, coaches, and successful heart-centered entrepreneurs, and much, much more. Welcome to the Wellness Show on Health, Wealth, and Enlightenment. I'm your host, Tyson Benning, and this is a talk show for one hour. You get to phone in and ask all your questions about dowsing, energy healing, what's up with planet Earth, and what's up in your life. Give us a call for a healing or to tune in about the topic on the show. The show's topic today is sacred sex and relationships. So are you having sacred sex? Yes or no? We want to know from you. So let us know. So phone in 1-866-369-7464 and we'll get you straightened out. So, so that's the topic. So what's up in your life in that area? Michael. <laughs> Michael's like, what is up in that area in your life? That's right. Hello. Well, Laura, I'm waiting for the answer. Welcome to the show there, Laura. Well, thank you for introducing me, Ty. Um, what's up? You're with most that? welcome. I am very, very particular about um, that in my life because of who and what I am. So I don't really partake too much. Right. In that kind of stuff because I haven't yeah, really found a- anyone. Yeah, if you you know, it's like a dance partner. You want a good dance partner, and you know, it's um, you know, when we're talking about sacred sex, it really we're talking about uh, a union that's sacred. Otherwise, it's not sacred sex. So that can be for many people very far and few between. Uh, there has to be an energetic match. Some people would call it soulmates or twin souls, or you know, or twin rays, or. Uh, my soul partner or you know all sorts of different terminology but even that can sort of miss the mark yeah in that many soul you know soul partnerships are really not the ones that are what would you say lovey-dovey peaceful they really have to do with um, the soul's evolution and can be quite dramatic and challenging and almost off the charts so a lot of twin souls are not necessarily <laughs> born at the same time or live in the same country or share the same bedroom because it's just too explosive, right? It's too much energy too. It's like looking into a mirror 24 seven, 365 every second, you get to see yourself and what, you know, you haven't worked out. And if you're at that stage and can handle that, I mean, it's a great way to get through your crap, so to speak, and get off the other side very quickly. But most people, really don't want that intensity in a relationship. They want to sort of dilly dally around and sort of uh, dip the wick, so to speak. They don't want to take it all too serious. So it's important that you think about this very, very much from, you know, a sacred point of view. Sex is fine. Nobody says that sex isn't great. Masturbation is great too. But if you really, really want to experience sacred sex, then you have to have a good energetic match with your partner. That's mm-hmm. why I would say a divine marriage, and I'm not saying a marriage that's uh, condoned or authorized by the state or by the church. I'm talking about a sacred marriage because two people have come together and decided to join in their discovery of both their each other and are on a spiritual path and want to join forces to do that. So a sacred marriage is really, <coughs> in my mind, and I'm not trying to be a good, is part of the equation that's necessary for sacred sex to really uh, be able to happen. It it has to be safe beyond all understanding. You cannot go down that royal road to enlightenment with a partner that may be here today and gone tomorrow, or we're just gonna have fun, or it's a one night stand or whatever. It just isn't destined to be that way. So it's pretty serious stuff, but it's also the royal road in my mind to enlightenment. What do I mean by that? I mean that when you come to terms with yourself and begin to love yourself unconditionally and you find another partner that's at that point in their lives too, and then you decide to join 
to share your unconditional love, known only for yourself, but with your partner, then the Kundalini that's rising in your body that you've experienced with flashes of Satori or enlightenment, and she has, when you join those two forces together, then the explosion of uh, the orgasmic, and I'm not saying ejaculation, I'm talking about orgasm. Uh, it, can, it can include ejaculation, but the orgasm is beyond all understanding because it's a union at the divine or at the soul level. So, yeah. I mean, one of the great ways to understand more about that is to uh, take a look at Mary Mag the book about Mary Magdalene by Tom Kenyon. It really has some uh, good examples in that. And if you open it up, there's a picture in there that looks uh, talks about or shows uh, what happens in the it's Kundalini. Baby. So mm -hmm. the Kundalini coming from up from the uh, base chakra, it curves like this around every chakra, right? So the chakra is between my two arms. I don't know if you can see the there it is. gap there. And then the two snakes <laughs> come up. And then at the top, there, there, there it is. There is the sacred union. And as they meet on the top, uh, by bringing it up, the, so the Kundalini is a pool of energy in the base of the chakra. And when you're one with the divine and you're grounded to Mother Earth, then the energy starts to climb up. As you can see, the male comes up one side and the female energy comes up the other, or the yin and the yang. And then the two snakes come together, they describe the snakes, and there is an endorphin or there is a, a, a <laughs> secretion that happens that lights up the pineal uh, gland and gives you, opens a crown chakra and you experience bliss. And bliss is really a state beyond orgasm. It's a state beyond, it just pure bliss is like being one with all that is, right? There's no separation. And so it's an ecstatic state uh, with your cup, like that snake is dripping into the cup. So when you have sex and you're with a partner and you're joined, then that Kundalini snake, the male comes up one side, goes through the penis into the vagina up the other side to the female back down through comes back through the vagina through the penis and up through the male so you have a double explosion happening and you start to see uh, the stars so to speak so that's really what sacred sex is about and it has to do with being able to modulate through breath and be able to raise kundalini uh, through your own system first before you can actually share that with another uh, uh, person of the opposite sex and you have to have a trust level there that is just uh, impeccable otherwise your heart won't be open enough to let that other person's energy flow through your chakras so thank you for holding them up, that up that's the pathway of the two serpents uh, you can bring the book down now so Tom Kenyon also has a really good set of um, CDs um, that you can listen to, which has to do, and I don't know if it's in the back of the book, but his whole uh, experience uh, with Mary Magdalene is from the point of view of Mary Magdalene being Isis or being an incarnation or part of the lineage of the sacred divine feminine through the Isis lineage where uh, the women were in the temple were actually there to instruct men at uh, puberty to about the right way to have sex the right way to uh, to uh, join with their partners in a loving way, something our culture doesn't even talk about, except uh, we learn all those great things in the bathroom uh, as boys, you know, in the school, but which is a lot of um, <laughs> information that isn't, that's not the way to learn about sex. But anyway, I digress. So <clears throat> the book itself, uh, I think will give you that, but you can always just Google Tom Kenyon and, what he talking about is um, the ancient uh, Egyptian way of raising the Kundalini. And in the use of his own voice and sound, he guides you through how to work on raising your own Kundalini uh, within your own body in preparation for that sacred marriage, so, or that sacred union. So it is, you know, I, I believe one of the royal paths to enlightenment, absolutely exquisite. and. Uh, something worth um, pursuing, but it's not something to be taken lightly. He talks about, or she talks about, Mary Magdalene talks about her relationship with Jesus in this book. And um, 
why they came together um, and how it helped him when he was crucified to rise up again was through through the energy that the two of them created. Yeah. And about her daughter and like her life after Je like Jesus would come to her after his death and um they would join they would join again because it wasn't about the physical act of intercourse but the energetic um so you can have um sex with someone without even touching them or being in this you could be in the same room you don't even have to be in the same room no and um uh, the That's way that we're talking about that one is also, I mean, there, <laughs> the penis can be in the vagina, but it doesn't have to. The, that linkage causes the, 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 the energy to flow through one set of chakras and the other simultaneously. Mm -hmm. So think of it this way. When the two snakes are inside of you and you do that, you have one cup and you have the, the energetics, you know, the, the sacred energy being dripped into the cup. But when you have two of them doing this, and then we have a, another cup, right, where the double snakes are dripping. So you're on another level. You're actually at an interdimensional level of the relationship. So you get, um, you know, where two or more are gathered, there am I. So you have a multiplier effect when you do that. So so uh, we're the line's open, so if you want to talk about your um, experience or how, what you believe, or you think it's a bunch of hooey, or whatever. Or, or ask questions. That or we ask questions. The line is open, 1-866-369-7464. Uh, Remember too, that there's a lot of breathing that goes, exercising that goes, exercises that go in with this. There's, like you said, the trust and the understanding and the, um, when you when you do push that energy up and, and through, and both of you are simultaneously doing it at the same time and you reach the climax, then there's a secretion that comes down um, through from, from the bowl, as you say at the top, that yeah. will seep down the back of your throat and um, is like, yeah. It's like the nectar of the gods. It's like prana or mana. <laughs> So the prana is like, it, it's an enlightening experience. You become one with the divine, there is no separation. So, I mean, the way to do this is to, is actually the stepping stone to that is the deep clearing protocol. You think, what that got to do with it? Well, quite simply, all the energy that you are consuming by trying to get out of your own way, which be core fractures, toxic emotion, unresolved conflict, whatever trauma is going on in your body, is gonna block the flow of Kundalini. If your energy is being used to repair or heal your body, then there isn't any extra energy to pool in the lower chakra, climb through the chakra. So uh, mm -hmm. you have to be at peace with yourself. Self. You have to be uh, doing some meditation and practice. You need to be able to do rhythmic breathing. You have to be able to relax. And uh, then you'll feel that pool of energy building in your lower chakra as it begins to uh, climb. So uh, fortunately, uh, yesterday, yesterday was Tuesday, right? I mean, the whole world is sort of collapsing in, like, what day is it anyway? Uh, I was able to experience the first um, bliss that comes from the Kundalini coming up the, sh up the spine which was exciting. Uh, I was really, really fortunate in that I had a session with my coach and that's all I'm working on is how to get out of my way and get into my true nature because when I'm in my true nature, I'm one with source consciousness. When I'm one with source consciousness and I breathe with one consciousness, then the Kundalini will then rise up through the chakras. And so I had this experience of totally being like a pillar of light and then the next thing is that uh, I had an interview with uh, Devora Gila, who is in my, is a co-facilitator in uh, Masterlight Mastermind, and she interviewed me about okay, why is it? Why are you here? What are you serving? So I got to talk about that whole experience again, and had a, 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 that experience all over again. So 
I had it twice. And then uh, I, Darlene, who lives with us, also gave me a massage in the evening, which unblocked me even further. So it was really pretty an incredible day in letting go to let this divinity flow. Protocol is the more energy you have, because you've let go of what no longer serves you, the more energy there is to pass up your, your chakras to achieve that bliss. So that's why we encourage you to do the deep clearing protocol, because it is the path to enlightenment. So what do you think of that, eh? I agree. Deep cleaning protocol is pretty cool. <clears throat> yeah, it's sort of like um, cleaning out the bottom of the barrel, right? Before you make a nice new fresh wine. Mm hmm I just made soap yesterday. Did you? Yeah, I make my own. Well, I have, I shouldn't say making soap. I use um, African black soap that I get from Africa. Mm. It's got three ingredients. And then I make my own liquid soap out of it. it. Takes about three months. So I made another batch. Last wow. about a year and a half, but um, I was getting down to the end and I'm like, ooh, I better <laughs> make some more. I won't have any. That's right. Time yeah. to make some more. Yeah, I've yeah. got to go make some more tools. So if you want to order some tools from the wellness store, now's the time because I have to make the pilgrimage down into my into my workshop and make some more tools. I got some brand new wire to make some paw pendulums. I'm out of the big paw pendulum, so I'll be in the workshop making some more. I'll also be making some more uh, retractable bobbers because somebody ordered them. Some more bracelets, both the ones that are positive and negatively wound. Positive, bring in cosmic energy, negative to take out what no longer serves you. It's great to buy them as a set. So I'm gonna be making all these tools. So now's the time to order them. How much are the bracelets? Uh, depends on what size they are. So I think they're about somewhere about eighteen dollars. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then the and then the. Yeah, but it depends on whether you want them also uh, with sprouting health or in them, which makes them five times stronger. So you have to be careful. You'll need the dowels to see whether that's too strong for you or not, right? So what is that? Is is the energy is sprouting health? I mean, spreading wheat. And when you take a living energy and work with it, the divic energy, and you put it with copper and set an attention with a living essence, then the multiplying factor is just right off the chart, right? So, for example, somebody was doing that, and he never gave me the recipe, but I guess we could figure it out. He I uh, used something like that and put it in his paint. He painted his room. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And when I was talking to him, I could see orbs everywhere. Absolutely, the whole room was full of orbs, right? And and what's the purpose of having all those orbs in your room? Well, just bringing bring energy. Well, the orbs are indicative of the high energy of the place and his state of consciousness, right? Mm. So again, you know, it's all energetic. So if the room is at a high vibrational frequency because of the divic energy in the paint, he's going to entrain to that energy, right? He's going well, to one with it. I put all kinds of scenes under my, when I painted my, bedroom last summer I put all kinds of stuff all kinds of intentions and love and joy and happiness and yeah I've had a friend who took all of the Reiki symbols because she's a Reiki master <laughs> painted yeah, them on the wall sure. first mm -hmm. and then painted over them and I have a drum uh my rain drum has all the Reiki symbols inside the drum right? yeah so. and I have all the Reiki symbols too I have my my room is is very long and narrow so there's a lot of wall space so that so there was a lot of stuff <laughs> that was given every space that i could i was painting on it so what does this have to do with sacred sex well again it has to do <laughs> because it, the more you clear yourself right the more energetics that you have that raises your consciousness the more energy that you have to come up your spinal column and if you're still dealing with trauma unresolved conflicts core fractures then that energy is being used to repair your body. So that's the key, right? You have to be have a level of health and you have to have a, a, a level of wellness in order to do this sort of work. So that's the connection. And, and where, wherever you, like your room, wherever you sleep, where like my whole house, people walk in and say, 
your house is so calm and cozy and lovely and that well yeah because me and god hang out here a lot <laughs> we do a lot of work here and so and then you're i'm always pushing the energy out clearing it with as you guys know i'm always um smoking my um sage i don't smoke it but i i smoke it <laughs> smoke the rooms and that's like how how do you keep your your environment not only in your body like what you put into it and how you feel in your body but also where you live and how you how you have like your outside um all your gardens what your front door looks like everything right it all starts from your entire environment that comes all the way into your inner self to your heart and if all of that is clear and loving right so the question here is um absolutely and the question here is what's the link to the spine is it linked to trauma well the trauma the trauma is just if you take your whole uh, body and you think of it as having energy right a full bucket of water and uh, if you think of trauma as holes in the bucket right the bigger the trauma the bigger the hole and you're trying to fill it with divine energy and the bucket's leaking uh you are not going to be having you know you're going to take a lot of energy to keep the bucket full if the bucket is self-contained which is by doing the deep clearing you've sealed all the holes in the bucket and repaired it so you're not leaking energy so to speak right then there's energy for your body to heal and repair itself and then the energy will then begin to with the breathing begin to pool in the lower chakra mm -hmm. in the base chakra mm -hmm. like it's a pool of energy you'll feel it it will heat up and then as it heats up and you keep breathing it will start if your system is clear start to climb through the chakras like those double snakes we talked about now what i've experienced is any trauma physically like um you know like a sun scare or a, a wound or a cut or a scar that cuts the meridian needs to be repaired or dealt with otherwise the energy gets jammed up against it and it can hurt like stink so you want to do some pretty deep clearing yeah to, uh, to be able to to move the energy otherwise it gets blocked and it can hurt and you can lead to things like headaches or back pains or wherever the energy is stuck so that's why there's a connection between the trauma and uh, the ability of the en extra energy once the trauma is healed those will be available to pool in the base chakra and then climb the chakras so remember that the the energy will follow the, the nervous system because that's where the that's where your energy flows right it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't actually flow like up your organs and stuff it would get lost and well no, it's going up the spine through the uh parasympathetic yeah. so the their spinal column the, the straight snake in the center is the shishumi that's the central column and the two snakes coming up that side are the parasympathetic nervous system. Right. The left one on the left is called Ida, and the right on the right is called Pingala, P-I-N-G-A-L-A. -A. Those the ones masculine, and ones feminine, or ones positive, ones negative, or ones magnetic and ones electric. And the two then do this dance up the spinal column to the top. Okay. So Volker says, if the energy does not go up the spine. They have a cut on the throat front. Can that be healed in balance? Of course it can. And yeah, all, all of the everything, yeah. all all can be healed. Yeah. Absolutely. Heather Heather has a question about her partner. How can I help my partner turn off the negativity of the world and news he gets consumed with so we are on the same plane and connect? Turn the TV off, number one. Okay, so you're a man, Tyson, and I love you, but coming from a woman, to do something to a man, to be like, well, we're turning off the TV and we're going to connect? Well, no, you don't do that. You make it so exciting and interesting that the TV is secondary. Okay, so then let's talk about that. Instead so of saying, turn off the TV. So turn them on. If you turn them on, that turns off the TV. It's just that simple. If you're going to talk about sacred sex and you're a feminine person that use your wiles you know how to do this this is not difficult 
I've seen, great, I've seen great video, and I loved it, where the guy is playing, you know, with his... Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and she to... comes in naked. I mean, yeah. And all of a sudden, he's not interested in playing his games anymore. He says, oh, honey, you know, that's it. They no drop their video games and they like... That's right. Oh, There's no more right. video games. The younger no ones, are, the older ones are like, yeah, let's get it on. But the well, younger ones are like... older ones, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're just out of their chair as quickly as a quick as a buddy. So, yeah. He says, I want him to woo me. Girl, mm -mm, no, that's not the feminine way, girl. No, that's our job to woo I have them. one uh, oh, my Lord, lady, honestly. I have a person who's very everything. much like my daughter. And what she does is she mm -hmm. says, she comes into the room and says, honey, <laughs> chase me. <laughs> yeah, yeah they right. chase each other and that you know that's right yeah that's right you just that's whisper what, in his ear when he's busy does. that's what I mean, my spirit dog could you does. chase me chase me chase me and if and if the other dog isn't going to chase him why like, he just loses interest in him right now but yeah. if they'll chase him boy they become best buds <laughs> yes everybody wants to be chased but first you got to be you know if you want to chase you got to chase if you want to be a good friend and have good friendships, be a good friend. Uh, no, if you want to be a good if lover, just, doesn't that isn't love. relevant to a male? Just say chase me. You'll get it. You'll get it. He, okay, never mind. Okay. It's just a short okay. circuit straight through to that part of the brain, right? We won't say what part of the brain, but no, that's the way. So I mean, we're being a bit facetious, but seriously, um, the TV, you know, at this time. If you don't limit the TV, like downstairs here in this house, that American TV is on 24-7, 365. You know, even when he's sitting out in the porch, it is, I tell you, it's overload. You know, it, it, it is so crazy making between jumping between those that are pro-Republican and those that are pro-Democrat. Pro, pro You're getting two stories. There's no way you can figure out what the truth is it because it's all mashed up. It's all like pablum that's being fed to you as our baby cereal or, you know, our, our, our ground up carrots. I mean, it's baby food. It's like you're just being fed this crap. So there's no way to be able to figure out what the truth is. So the more TV you l listen to, the more <laughs> confused you get about what's really going on in the world. So how about you, you just reset? So honey, I know the news is important to you. So how about we watch the news together? I mean, you can fall asleep while he watches the news, but you're going to do it together. Let's watch the evening news once, okay? All right, and then we're going to watch a movie or we're going to go to the bedroom or we're going to do something else. But hey, honey, or it's sort of like, okay, okay honey, let's watch one football game, right? I'm going to share, you know, you have to get into his world, right? Yeah. And you have to relate to his world, even if you don't want to, then he can start to relate to your world. Sorry, that's just the way it is. Males are in a little box, right? And, uh, you know, you gotta, you know, don't disturb me in my box. I'm watching my show, honey. Don't bother me. Or I'm writing my book, Sarah. Don't come and bang on my door. I, you know, just, so just the way we are. So, Crystal Clear says, sure, but who can have sex seven hours a day every day? And then... Somebody on the Wellness Academy said challenge accepted. Well, okay, well, let's go um, back to sex. I'm, you know, you don't have to have sex but, every five minutes to make this work, but you can do things that are that are lovey-dovey in a way in which uh, the person knows that they're being paid attention to and that they, they are loved. You know, it doesn't have to be <coughs> sex every moment, moment. yeah. Um, there's also this thing and I know Heather understands me, and so does Crystal, that you can, you can push the energy, that energy, so you're sitting next to them and get them all riled up just by pushing your energy around. And if you don't understand what I'm saying, then call me and set up an appointment, and I'll show you. Now behave yourself, Sarah. No, I'm not, I'm not going to behave myself. No, <clears throat> absolutely not, because it's true. Of course and it's if true. If, they're doing, if that guy right there... If I was Sarah and he was reading his book and I want a little mm -mm -mm, something, 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 there's stuff we could do. All of a sudden they're like, hmm, hmm, what's going on? <laughs> Let me tell you, 
if you, it, everyone's always thinking about the physical and the stimulation, but they're not using their, their energy, their brain is the, the way more sexual than the physical body. That's all I have to say. <laughs> right. Next question. <clears throat> Be careful what you ask for. <laughs> you may wake up this. You may wake up that that monster within. And in the beginning, it's kind of fun. After a while, it kind of it. You know, it's good. Well, I mean, we're talking about sex. We're talking about sex. This is not just you know humping. This is something much more than that. So exactly. you can get pretty bored pretty fast, exhausted, and get your adrenals burnt like crisp if you insist on just having ordinary sex. This is not what we're talking about. We're talking about, I mean, even to have a pool of energy to climb up the chakras would be completely exhausted by ejaculating. So they're not, the two aren't the same. I mean, you have to be conserving. In fact, in the Taoist tradition, you're spending a lifetime or certainly a long period of time learning how to cultivate the Tao within or how to cultivate the Qi, whether you're doing Tai Chi or whether you're doing whatever it is, you're learning how to build the Qi inside of your body. It's only then that the pool of energy is sufficient for it to rise up the spine. So if you're having sex every five minutes and ejaculating, then it, there is no energy to go up the spine. It's impossible. Right. So um, it is Crystal's birthday today. She's the big happy birthday, Crystal. Five O, five O, that half a century, the the start of the best years of your life, right now. Mm. Wow. Five O, eh? Yeah. Wow. Dude, that was a long time ago for me. I know. I was gonna say, do you remember five O? <laughs> Even for me, it's like, hmm, it's been a while. <laughs> Yeah, well, those good old days. Okay, yeah. <laughs> the good old days. Yeah, enjoy them while they last. <laughs> yeah, it's a wonderful time. Yeah. It is. Because you've got a lot of energy still uh, to do all sorts of things. So, yeah, be creative and, and do what you want to do and, and really go for it because uh, later on you won't have the same amount of energy. You'll certainly have the passion to do what you want to do, but you don't necessarily have all the energy. So, Let's set the intention to find the right partner to have the sacred sex then. Yeah, that's something that is an inside job, right? <laughs> we don't go looking for it. Uh, it's something that uh, that arrives when we're ready. So uh, it's like a crystal skull. They say you don't go uh, to find your crystal skull. You wait for the crystal skull to arrive when you're ready. So it's the same thing. Don't get fixated and going looking for the ideal man if you're not already the ideal woman or vice versa. So be what it is that you want to attract, right? Someone, Volker says, um, I, I find the dark uses love bombing to make people attract to each other and get stuck in lower vibes. Yeah, there's a lot of, I mean, that's what, um, you know, voodoo is all about. A lot of it is around using sexual dolls and and uh, and pins and all sorts of crazy stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of what's going on, you know, in intelligent agencies is getting people trapped by having sex. So they're in a compromised position. I mean, sex is the ultimate uh, weapon in order to uh, to be able to bribe or enslave or, or uh, you know, other human beings. So. And, you know, and, and, and a satanic ritual sex is used in very, very hideous ways in order to have a pleasure that comes from, we won't even talk about it. So, yeah, so there, there's ways in which sex is can and always has been used as a manipulative force well, to dominate one person over the other. Over the other, yeah. Or each I other. Or, or I as knew this woman once that put a spell on her husband to get her husband, and so he's been under this spell the whole time of their marriage. And I was like, really? Yeah. Well, it, why, would it want, not, uh, why would you want somebody that doesn't really want you? No, I don't understand that. Yeah. Well, they live in a different world, right? Well, clearly. Clearly. I mean, but, but to them, that's, you know, where they get their jollies, right? 
is by controlling other people. The thing about that is, you know, um, the karma of that is just horrendous, right? Thank you. That's what I'm, that's, I mean, maybe I didn't say it, but that's what I'm talking about. Like not who would want, but who would even want to know that but I have to go under don't even know that There is karma, right? They well, don't even know it. I go into their shop and they have their shop set up too, so that you buy more than what you went. Like, so if you go in there for Sage, I would always end up buying so much more. And I was like, why? Well, then when I found out that they have spells so that you buy more, I was like, insane. I refused to go back in there. Refused. Well, isn't that what a lot of marketing is? is you got to do this. And even the terminology that's used in marketing is really quite insidious in that we have to play this game to entrap somebody to want to buy our product. You look, you know, energetically, if you're in the right vibrational frequency, people are going to find you because just like if you're looking for your soulmate. You know, if you go looking for them with a shopping list, you know, you're running up and down, you know, through whatever, you know, right. the streets looking for your soulmate, you're not going to find it. You're going to find a lot of guys who are going to pretend to be your soulmate, but you're not going to find them. So it's the right. same thing when you try and do that by finding clients that way, right? When you're running around doing all this crazy stuff. Look, you vibrate at a certain frequency, you attract certain people at that frequency. They're the I ones who want to work all, with you. All the time, all the time. I saw you on the thing and I kept saying, I had to go see Laura. I keep seeing you in my mind's eye. I would, I don't under, I don't know, but I just knew I had to come see you and not the other people. I looked at, I looked at your Facebook page and I knew I had to come see you. And, and it happens with me all the time all the time and when people just call me up on the spur of the moment sometimes i'm they're like oh do you have any tonight nope i don't because i know immediately i'm like no they're just looking mm -mm, i'm not the one for them oh, okay or they'll say oh i want i want one right now and i'm saying no i can't right now but i could you know like on sunday or something and they're like no i'm looking for it right now then i know that i'm not supposed to be matched up with them right. and i don't try and make it happen does that make sense like i don't yeah, don't try to make anything happen as soon as you're trying to make something happen you're in your human mind consciousness you're already in trouble mm -hmm. exactly you know i mean when you walk into a room it either feels right or it feels 